Hello and welcome to this biopsychology topic video, this one looking at infradian and ultradian rhythms, how to write an essay on this particular topic. This video is one of three and in the first part we outlined and evaluated infradian and ultradian rhythms. In the second part we looked at how we might answer different types of exam style questions and then in this final part we're going to look at essay writing and evaluation. Let's imagine you got the following essay question, outline and evaluate infradian and or ultradian rhythms for 16 marks. Now the usual rules apply, we've got approximately 20 minutes to write an essay, we might at an upper word limit be looking at writing about 500 words, of which 175-ish might be our knowledge, 325 might be evaluation. Okay. Now for this particular essay I might apply the following structure, I might outline ultra diem rhythms followed by two different evaluation points, one drawing on research support by Tucker and then one looking at the issues with research in this area. Then I might go on to outline infradian rhythms, followed again by two evaluation points, one drawing on research by Reinberg, and a second looking at further research by Russell, which we introduced in the last video. Okay, So let's see what this looks like in principle, and starting with uh, the outline looking at the ultradian rhythm outline. Remember, this is only going to be half of my O1, and therefore I might be looking to write around 75 to 80 words instead of the full 150 here. Okay. You might say that biological rhythms are cyclical changes in the way that biological processes determine our behaviour. Ultra diem rhythms last less than 24 hours and can be found in the pattern of human sleep. The cycle alternates between REM sleep and non-REM sleep okay, and consists of five stages. The cycle starts at light sleep, progressing to deep sleep and then into REM sleep. And the cycle repeats itself about every 90 minutes and on average a person might experience five full cycles per night. Okay, That's 80 words, so we've done that nicely. We've outlined what we mean by this idea of ultra diem rhythms and given some nice clear knowledge of the sleep-wake cycle there. Okay, We're then going to want to look on how to evaluate that, starting with research support by Tucker. And we're just going to take simple burger evaluation paragraphs in this particular essay. So a simple yet effective paragraph might read, the problem with studying sleep cycles is the individual differences found in humans. Then we bring in our evidence, the meat of that burger. Tucker et al. found significant differences between participants in terms of the duration of each stage of sleep, particularly stages three and four, just before REM sleep. This study was carried out in controlled laboratory settings, which meant the differences in the sleep pattern could not be attributed to other factors, but only due to innate biological differences between the people. And that's important because it's shown these differences must be internal differences. This means that a range of factors must contribute to ultra diem rhythms, and these should be considered in research to fully understand these rhythms. And that you might be sitting there thinking, actually, we could embed in at this stage examples of the issues and debates in psychology. And you'd absolutely be right to do so, mentioning the idea that actually maybe we should therefore be taking an ideographic approach to research rather than a nomothetic approach that generates general laws. OK, but I've kept it nice and simple for this essay. Let's consider the issues with the research, and I've done this as a completely separate paragraph, which is fine to do, or you can actually take an extended approach within your evaluation. But let's see what that looks like. So you might say, however, the way in which such research, for example, Tucker is conducted, may tell us little about ultra diem rhythms in humans. When investigating sleep patterns, participants must be subjected to specific levels of control and be attached to monitors that measure such rhythms. This may be invasive for the participant, leading them to sleep in a way that does not represent their ordinary sleep cycle. This therefore makes investigating ultra diem rhythms, such as the sleep-wake cycle, extremely difficult due to the risk of false conclusions being drawn and the low levels of ecological validity found in such studies. So there we have it. We've done our first half of the essay. We've outlined ultra diem rhythms, we've brought in research support, and then we've challenged that and brought in issues with the research. Let's repeat that. Let's do exactly the same for infra diem rhythms now. Remember, we've got another 75 to 80 words of outline to go here, and that's going to be our next day at one point. So we might say another important biological rhythm is infra diem rhythms that last longer than 24 hours. A monthly infra diem rhythm is the female menstrual cycle, which is regulated by hormones that either promote ovulation or stimulate the uterus for fertilisation. Ovulation occurs halfway through the cycle when oestrogen levels peak and usually lasts for 16 to 32 hours. After the ovulation phase, progesterone levels increase in preparation for the possible implantation of an embryo into the uterus. Okay, So there we have our second outline, bringing us to about 150 words in total for the outline, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now let's look at how we might use Reinberg here as research uh, and see how we might structure this. So we might say despite the fact, and you'll notice here that we're hinting towards that examiner report that I mentioned in videos one and two. Despite the fact it's logical to assume that infradian rhythms are governed by internal factors, research actually suggests that the menstrual cycle is to some extent governed by exogenous site gavers. Okay? 
So we're bringing in specialist terminology from other parts of the biopsych course now. Reinberg examined a woman who spent three months in a cave with only a small lamp to provide light. And Reinberg noted that her menstrual cycle shortened from the usual 28 days to 25.7. And these results suggest that the lack of light which is an exogenous zeitgeber in the cave, affected her menstrual cycle. And therefore, this demonstrates the effect of external factors on infradian rhythms. Okay. Finally, let's look at further research that supports that previous point, even more by Russell and the synchronization of the menstrual cycles. So you might say there is further evidence to suggest that exogenous zeitgebers can affect infradian rhythms. For example, Russell found that the female menstrual cycles become synchronized with other females through odor exposure, despite the fact the two groups were separate. This therefore suggests that the synchronisation of the menstrual cycle can be affected by pheromones uh, and indicates that external factors must be taken into consideration when investigating infradian rhythms and that perhaps a more holistic approach should be taken as opposed to a biologically reductionist approach that only considers one endogenous influence. Okay? So I've started to bring in my issues debates. They're not done a lot of it, but just acknowledge some specialist terminology from the issues debates part of the course. So there you have it, that essay fits nicely onto one page typed, is just over 500 words long with about 155 words for our knowledge and four simple but yet effective burger evaluation points within 335, 36 words there and that's provided for you in your My Tutor to You accounts following this webinar, okay? There you have it. So we've now looked at the three videos and in this one we looked at how you might structure an essay on infradian and ultradian rooms. I hope you found this series of videos useful. Thank you once again for watching and goodbye and best of luck.